Hey, Peter. Hey, hey. From the other side yeah. of the world to you. Yeah. And hopefully it's sunny nice. Tasmania, huh? Uh, yes, it's it's uh, it's summer. So, you know, it's uh yeah. It's been warm. Um and it's been uh yeah, it's 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 a, it's a nice looking day. A bit cooler overnight with some rain and stuff around about, but um, okay, yeah, that's that's uh, pretty good. Um, We're supposed to so, get some snowfall here, up maybe almost a foot, maybe almost oh, a foot. I've heard. I'm I'm glad for you. I'm glad for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my boys will be ecstatic. They've been walking around shoveling, seven year old and nine year old, and they're making some good money shoveling people's driveways and things. And uh, so they're having a they're having a, a fun time with that. I used to do that when I was a kid. And I was thinking the other day, I'm like, man, they're getting great business. And then I thought, oh, these kids are so cute. If they came to my door, I'd hire them. You know, the, the <laughs> shovelers are bigger than them. You know, can we shovel your driveway? You know, and uh, mm. <laughs> they're just cute as a button. Yeah, there's a there's that father, that proud father. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, uh, welcome to everybody else uh, to Insight Now. Um, um unfortunately. Uh, for us and for everybody that Chris is up the mountain. He's on oh, the yeah. mountain top. He's gone to the mountain. Yeah. Um, Where there's no so, Wi Fi. Yeah, there's no Wi Fi and he's a part of a retreat that's happening uh, up there. So that's uh, he's he's advancing the kingdom. Yes, uh, amen. So that thing. So so uh, here we are. One one of the things that you know we talk a lot about uh, insight now, Peter, is about the kingdom. Yes. Uh, you know, we 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 kingdom we're kingdom movers, we're kingdom reformers, yes. you know, we, we are, uh, continue to embrace, um, the kingdom because we knew that that's we, what well, we know. And Jesus, that's really all that Jesus talked about. Mm -hmm. I mean, he came to demonstrate the kingdom. Yeah. We came to demonstrate the kingdom. We came to serve at the kingdom. And then, uh, you know, one of the, one of my favorite, um, you know, so, uh, scriptures, and I, I like the I like the scriptures that sort like the kingdom is this, yes, or the kingdom is about this, um, yes. You know, I, I've just become obsessed over the years with the kingdom, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, all, that's really all I can you know continue to see. So, I'm we, trying to see if I can find your book quick on the shelf uh, for those that listen now or later. Uh, fascinated me, by heaven on earth, right? You mean this one? You mean this one? Yes. I just have to have a go. Fascinated by heaven on earth. It's a great and, read, uh, and 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 I, okay. I don't know what you tend to hear, Mark, but the testimony I tend to hear is, boy, that made it really simple. Uh, it made yeah. it so 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 clear to understand. And I remember when I first met met you years ago, there was kind of this thing of like, well, what is the kingdom? I mean, I can't help but see it throughout the Gospels, but but what is it? And. Uh, you know, and so I think just some simple, there's many that would benefit from even just introductory teaching about the kingdom. And uh, I'd highly commend that book as a great place to start. Yeah. So one of my favorite scriptures is, um, you know, which is you know, birthed also into my second book, um, but Romans 14. And, mm -hmm. and so what you have, Paul is contrasting here to say, look, the kingdom is not this. Yeah. So the kingdom is not about uh, eating and drinking. I mean, when I first read that, I was thinking, "Oh my goodness!" Like, <laughs> you, you got to be joking, you know? Because I like to eat and and drink, um, tea, coffee, and all of those sorts of things. Just getting that what? right. <laughs> yeah, um, you're gonna join a monastery so, and eat one one slice of bread a day. Oh no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> That's not the kingdom for us. No, but the Passion Translation said it, it's 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 the kingdom is not a matter of rules. About exactly food and drink so what he what he's saying is it looks it's not about what you should do and what you shouldn't do it's not about mm -hmm. a list of rules Come on. and you know like this is what holiness is you know you have your mm. hair cut this way or you don't wear makeup or all of those sorts of stuff and um it seems like i think peter we 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 we're good at making rules right mm. you know, we're good at setting this is what the rule looks like or this is how Thing and we we justify it by well everybody no, got, got to know what this is or what that is or you know all of those sorts of things uh, and yet we we know that coming into the into the new covenant uh, God says I'm going to write those things on your heart come on you know so He says I'm going to write I'm going to write the laws on your heart yeah and it was really interesting because everybody's heart is going to read a little differently whoa. 
Whoa. Don't, didn't don't say, do that to me. Gonna don't ro- do that to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to write the, everything on everybody's heart, you know. And I think this is where we get into a problem, Peter, sometimes is that we, we judge people by what we think suits us. Mm. Right? And so mm. I, think Paul is, I think Paul is trying to really get something into here where he's saying, listen, it's not this. Yes. It's, it's not one size fits all. It's yes. not all. It's not all about the rules of what you cannot eat or you can't mm. eat. You can't drink coffee. You can all of this mm. sort of stuff. And if you, and if you look at any sort of um, religion, they all have food laws. In fact, in the Old Testament, we saw the food laws, mm-hmm. which were there for a purpose for that time. But then we know in the New Testament, um, you know, Paul has this this encounter. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, Peter has this encounter. Yeah. Um, and, Acts 10. And, and, yeah, and and he says, you know, everything is everything is clean. It's not yeah. all beneficial to you, right? And you have to work out what's beneficial and what what isn't. You know, it's like mm. you know, there's some things that I can I can't eat that you can. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Just there's some things I eat that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> not beneficial. Not beneficial. Yeah. Oh but man. This is the isn't this is the interesting thing though. Paul says, "Hey, listen, it's not about the shoulds, what you shouldn't do, or you should do, or whatever else." But he said, "It is this, mm. right? It is about righteousness. Mm. It is about peace, and it is about joy, involving the Holy Spirit." Hmm. Now, isn't that interesting? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So I love it. I love we, it. How do we yeah. get that? I mean, the pet. Yeah. You know, well, so- I, I, I love what it says next. For he who serves Christ in these things, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, is acceptable to God and approved by men. Yeah. And so... You know, we are talking ahead of time and it's like, you know, who doesn't want to feel that they're in right standing with God? You know, who doesn't want to have peace with God and their their brothers Mm -hmm. and sisters in Christ and and the rest of the world, too, to have peace? And who doesn't want to be filled with joy? You know, we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I remember years ago, I was at a conference where Graham Cook said, well, we wouldn't want to lose our joy or else we'd be like jellyfish with no with no strength. And it was like, oh my gosh, he takes that literally. And it, but it's true. I mean, we felt like that. It's like you melt without the joy of the Lord. And um, but it's you know. So how do we live in how do we live in this space? And I think that this is such a powerful promise that the kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking. It's not in following rules and regulations about food and do this, don't do that. You should, you shouldn't, um, etc. Uh, but in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. But it's like, how do you get there? That's such an amazing promise. But, but, you know, how do you get there or said differently? What would be the greatest inhibitor to that? And as we were talking ahead of time, it's like if, you, if, if we all kind of just do a little uh, examination of the context of that scripture, if we start at verse 12, it says, so then each of us shall give account of himself to God. And this is what Mark was just saying. We, you know, it makes it harder for it to be for the laws to be written by the hand of God onto soft human hearts instead of onto a tablet of stone that everybody sees exactly the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Lord's told me before not to read a certain Christian book. Is was it a bad book? No, it wasn't a bad book. Lots of people were being blessed by it, but for whatever reason, it wasn't for me to read. Now, does that mean that I should then say I don't think anybody else should read that? God spoke to me. You got to be kidding yeah. me! It's a great yeah. book. It just happens to be that for whatever reason, God wants to preserve me, I believe, from seeing what's in that bookmate because he wants to give me a, a nuanced version of that for myself or whatever, or a different perspective. And he's saying, that's yeah. that's so well done, you'll, get, you'll take that perspective on. But I don't then need to tell other people, don't read that book, God told me not to. And so, yeah. so then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore, this is the context for this whole section of scripture. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. And if I can just bookend it, then if, if people would follow all the way down to verse 22, it says, do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Watch this. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. So we're talking about righteousness, peace, and joy. Mm-hmm. 
and the Holy Spirit. And here's an incredible promise from God. You want to walk in happiness. Don't condemn yourself in what you approve. In other words, a violated conscience causes unhappiness. And so what happens is Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. For with the measure that you use, it'll be measured against you. When when I operate in judgment, I'm setting up a boomerang effect of judgment in my own life. With the very same measure I'm using against someone else, I now come under the same judgment myself because I've pronounced it against them. I've also pronounced it against myself. And so there's there's this process. If you look at the section of scripture, we're we're talking about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And we're going to serve Christ in these things. We're acceptable to God and approved by man. So who doesn't Mm -hmm. want that? But you have to look to say, how do you get there? It's bookended by judgment. It's really about judgment is perhaps the greatest robber of this sort of lifestyle that Paul's describing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was um, uh, having um, you know, some thoughts about this whole thing of uh, judgment and, and judging. You know, and I think in, in my own experience, um, I, I've seen some of the most judgment happen in the church. Mm. Uh, and and I think that it, it's it's sad. I, I think it's why Paul wrote that mm-hmm. way back then. You know, like he 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 knew mankind well enough, and probably his own experiences to say, mm. you know, let us not judge one another anymore. Mm. Like, like, like let's just stop doing that. Mm. Um, and uh, and I think it's 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 really akin to the, the thing that you've received. Uh, if you have not fully had a revelation of what you've received, then you tend to get caught in it. You know, like for instance, mm-hmm. uh, forgiveness. We've been forgiven, mm-hmm. you know? uh, and yet I've, I've, I, in my own life, and I've seen other people uh, too who ha- know they are forgiven, but they not good at forgiving other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And. And, and Jesus was pretty strong on that, as far yep. as you know, uh, not not forgiving. And we know the effects of that. If you don't forgive somebody, then you really stop up things happening in your own life, particularly in the mm-hmm. area of healing or yep. deliverance. Yeah. So I, I think I think uh, you know often the very thing that we've received, the very thing that we've it's been done for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Jesus took the judgment. Mm-hmm. Right? So that we would not have to experience a judgment, and yet what we tend to become is quite judgmental. Yes. Uh, the Passion mm-hmm. Translation says it like this, probably in, in language that's even more for today. It says, "Stop being critical and condemning of other believers." You know. So how, how many times, Lord help do we us, become critical? Mm-hmm. Why are we critical? We're critical because we are comparing somebody mm-hmm. else with us. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, like you just said. You know, it's like, uh, well, you know, God told me not to read that book, so I'm going to impose that upon anybody. <laughs> so anybody else that's reading that book, they know, must not become, hear from become, God like I do. <laughs> and you become critical of them. Yep. Oh my God. You know, Mark, I was just you said something, and it connected to this thought I was having the other day. You know, how, how does this happen in the body of Christ like that? How does it happen like that? And I felt like the Lord was showing me this, that the body of Christ is full of people who want to please him. Mm-hmm. There's a genuine desire in his children to be pleasing to him, to, to do what's right, to believe what's right, to say what's right, to act in a way that's pleasing to him. And like you're saying, it depends on what we've received. So if the message that we've received is really one of the law, not to put it too bluntly, but in other words, do this, don't do that, more of this, less of that. Um, You know, you're going to be in trouble if you don't, um, that Mm -hmm. sort of type of thing. Then what we do is we think that to be pleasing, we have to cross all of these T's, dot all of these I's, and do all of these sorts of things. Now, we never want to move away from desiring to be pleasing to God. It's just a question of what direction do you shoot that arrow? in order to be pleasing to God. And I just want to highlight again what we're saying here. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking or laws or regulations, following laws and regulations about foods, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Watch this. For he who serves Christ 
in these things, flowing with Holy Spirit in righteousness, peace, and joy is acceptable to God and approved by men. I think we haven't quite conceptualized that the thing God's Mm. looking for us from is that Holy Spirit walk day in, day out. You're in relationship with Holy Spirit and you're filled with a sense of righteousness that you have by the blood of Jesus. You're filled with a sense of peace that you have with him and with others. You're overflowing with joy, which is causing you to have supernatural godly strength that doesn't overwhelm other people. It just lifts them up. And that, that sort of thing, Jesus is saying, God's saying, this is what's acceptable to me. This is what's delightful to me. You know, it goes on to say this later, he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he doesn't eat from faith for whatever is not from faith is sin. It's saying the things that you think are sin, just walk with me, be in relationship with me. Let that righteousness, peace and joy flow out of you. That's what's Mm -hmm. pleasing to me. You know, Mm -hmm. that's what's pleasing to me. So I think that there's such a desire in the body of Christ to be pleasing. But if what they've been taught is that being pleasing is being right, being pleasing is being perfect, being pleasing is doing this and not doing that, then what you do is you judge other people that are not equally pleasing. And then you go into the temple and you say, thank you, God, that I'm not like other people, right? And that I tithe my mint and stuff like that. And not knowing that we've become Pharisees without realizing that the thing that would please God is to oper- is to walk with Holy Spirit in righteousness, peace, and joy. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think the thing that you've made really good emphasis upon, and I just put it in another way too, is that um, you know Paul is is contrasting something that binds, right, Come on. and brings people into bondage, into something that the kingdom is about. So we're saying it's not about bondage. It's not about taking people into a yoke Mm. of slavery Mm. to these things, but it's about a freedom in righteousness because righteousness is is about getting set free from the the stuff that has caused you to be, you you know, like it's just, it's coming into right standing. Mm -hmm. You know, peace is not just the absence of chaos, but it's a, it's a it's it's not the absence of something; it's the presence of somebody. Come on, come on! You know, it's 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 like a, you're coming into a freedom, and people who are at peace say, "I'm I'm just free from all of the stuff that's happening around come about on. me." And come joy on. is is a release of mm. uh, emotions and mm-hmm. laughter and a sense of well being mm. and you know, all of those sorts of things. And yet each one of these are also weapons. Wow. You know, they are they are freedoms and they are a weapon to use to bring about those sorts of freedom. You know, righteousness, mm. peace and joy. And Ooh. so and so you know, I, I think that he's he's really wanting to make an effort. He, uh, uh, he really wanting to make um, a statement here, because in context of what he's just saying, he says, "Listen, when you judge somebody, you take them into bondage. When you are critical of somebody, you're taking them into bondage. When you condemn somebody, mm-hmm. that, you know." And and I know that we have people who behave in a way that maybe they shouldn't or maybe mm-hmm. in, a, in a way that is different to us or wherever it was like that. But we're not called to bring people into bondage. We're not called mm-hmm. to bring people into condemnation. We're not mm-hmm. called to bring people under criticism. We're yep. called to bring freedom into mm-hmm. people's lives. Yes. You know, who the sun sets free is free it's and free. Deep. Yes, And so therefore, if you are free indeed, you mm-hmm. are therefore become a purveyor, a releaser of freedom. Yes. And that's why Paul, I think, is having a real go here at about this. He's saying, listen, mm-hmm. This, mm-hmm. this is not your calling. This yeah. is not who you are. This is yep. not what Jesus made the way for you to be because it's not like this. This is the yes. kingdom. Yes. The kingdom is like this. And we can all say yes and amen to that and go away and have these rules or regulations about stuff that, you know, we judge people with. Yeah. And that we become critical of, of, of people. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we saw in the, between the Old Testament and the New Testament where they went from rules and regulations about types of foods and so forth like that because it was essential then. Mm-hmm. God was teaching them. He was discipling a nation. nation. 
and then into the place here where Peter has this encounter and 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 God says you know it's none of this none of this is unclean yeah you know so wow. it's like you know um, and the concept was that it's it's all permissible but it's not all beneficial yes yes but you choose what's beneficial hmm it's for freedom he set us free stand firm exactly. therefore and don't submit yourself again to a yoke of slavery and um yeah it's so um that's really good that's really yeah. good i mean one uh, of the things that i well you know if i if i just take on i mean you know joy is one of my favorite topics you know and you mentioned before you know that in, in Nehemiah, which is really quite interesting because mm -hmm. Nehemiah was talking about food stuff there. Yeah. Uh, in any case, and then he goes in to say, now the joy of the Lord is your strength. The strength. Right. And then we know that joy, uh, laughter is medicine, like mm -hmm. it's healing. Yeah. Um, and then we, we already know that joy is, is strength. Now, if you're feeling weak, if you're feeling worn out and fatigued, then possibly you should have a look at where you lost your joy. Yes. Right now, it's not technically completely lost, but it's like it's it's been set aside, misplaced, set aside yep. or misplaced, or you're not being filled with with joy. Mm. And of course, we know that in the next chapter of um, Romans 15, that that what peace and joy being filled with mm -hmm. produces is an abundant mm -hmm. hope. Yeah. Mm. And if there's one thing, if there's one thing that I think that we need, and there's lots of things, but I think at the moment that, that there's been such a huge attack on hope. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that heaven itself mm. wants to restore hope. It wants to restore hope to people. Want to mm -hmm. help people to realize that hey there are lots of things going on lots of difficulties taking mm -hmm. place a lot of restrictions a lot of rules and all sorts of yep. things things aren't what they used to be but listen mm -hmm. it's going to get better it's going to get yep. better listen to this the therefore place. therefore let us i'm sorry mark no you go no this hope thing is stirring in me therefore let us pursue verse 19 the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. There's mm -hmm. something, there's, do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food or for the sake of your regulations. There's something about hope and joy that Mark's getting at here. And you can mm -hmm. see globally how uh, judgment and critique mm -hmm. and criticalness towards one another uh, mm -hmm. is actually sabotaging the hope levels in the world. It's sabotaging mm -hmm. the joy that we have. Mm -hmm. It's sabotaging the strength that we have. You know, it's interesting because we also know that in God's presence is fullness of joy. And so I would propose that one thing that doesn't tend to go with me very well in God's presence is judgment. You know, I don't mm -hmm. tend to do real well it, smack dab in the middle of his presence and then bringing up um, all of critical accusations that I could come up with against other people. Those two things, in my experience, are somewhat mutually exclusive experiences. <laughs> Judgmental behaviors or thoughts in my head tend not to exist in his presence. And I yeah. think that that there's something about coming into his presence. It's the fullness of joy. It's the place of strength. It's where hope abounds in his, our heart in his, in his presence and recognizing that there's, there, is a, there is a work that's happening right now in the world where criticalness, judgment, lack, despair, hopelessness, et cetera, are creating this sort of vortex. And whenever there's that, those sort of feedback loops that create a vortex like that, you have to break the cycle somehow. And sometimes it doesn't even matter which plug you pull, just pull one of those plugs and you're gonna start to see something break off. You know, for some people it might be get in the presence of God and the judgment will stop. Other people might be stop, just stop the judgment, stop the criticalness and, the, and, and that will come. For other people, it might be just choose to laugh. Remember the good things that God has going on in your life. Thank him for the abundance of everything in your life. And you're going to find yourself in his presence because you entered with thankfulness. And you can see there's this ecosystem of his presence that starts to break off. And this is the, this is the righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit that Mark's talking about. That's an ecosystem. 
And there's this alternative ecosystem, which yeah. says, I'm over here, I'm critiquing, I'm judging, I'm tearing others down, I'm comparing, I'm criticizing. And that's the ecosystem that we want to get out of. And that's the way of the world. And we want to come into the place of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's acceptable to God. And every man will approve of it because this is what every man wants anyway. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, you know, if I could be a little bit um, uh, Aussie, um, you know, a little bit more d direct on some of those things. Um, I, I think that... that um, as a whole, we, and I, and I mean we as in, you know, the children of God, believers, uh, have embraced some things that we're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. And there are things that, that, that are natures or are things that operate in the kingdom of hell, or not, not kingdom of hell because you're not a king, so, but in, in the realm of hell, hellish yep. hell. Mm -hmm. And what we've tended to do is that we've, what we've convinced ourselves or been convinced of, particularly by the world, that it's okay to be critical or it's okay to talk about somebody mm -hmm. um, behind their back because, mm -hmm. you know, you've got a c concern for their welfare. It's called gossip. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's okay to be critical, you know, because, what, but it's it's not or we partake of fear, for instance, and in, in fact, That's actually, it. the church, the church has used fear. It's yep. used a, an attribute of hell mm -hmm. to accomplish heavens, and it doesn't work. It's always a problem mm -hmm. when you use something out of hell to accomplish it. And so, well, you know, these people got saved. Well, often what happens when people get saved out of fear, they actually become more judgmental, critical, because mm. it's an attribute of hell and so i think what we we have to uh, uh do is to have the understanding that we we can't touch these things mm. these things are not untouchable you, you can't say well it's okay if you just do a little bit of it or whatever else mm -hmm. it is that's not what the scripture says the scripture says listen you can have righteousness you can have mm. peace and joy you can have stacks of it you can have mm. more than you can handle you could be just having absolutely a flow of it and it's going to have a wonderful effect because people are going to love you for being releasing these sorts of things. Yep. But you I know, don't know of anybody, anybody says, hey, I love that criticism. I love that critical spirit, the judgmental yep. stuff that you got. <laughs> Give me more of it. <laughs> you know, one of the things that's like, I can almost hear myself, hear people asking questions and this thing of like, if I, if I'm not critical, if I'm not judgmental, you know, but what about, what about when people do wrong things, et cetera? And I think one of the things that we get wrapped up in is this whole thing of, we forget that it's so far as it depends upon us, be at peace with all men. And I think that, you know, we have to recognize that um, if someone's doing wrong things to you, um, it's not that you can't recognize that that's happening, but you don't have to live in the place of judgment. You don't have to have this codependent thing of, I need them to change. If they don't change, it's not okay for me. I'm going to have to force them to change. I'm going to critique them. You know, now I'm going to gossip about them, whatever, all of that sort of thing that goes on. It's like, no, 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 you're called to peace with them. So, so far as it depends upon you, you're going to do what you can to be at peace with them. You'll talk with them directly, et cetera, but it's, but you're not going to, you're not going to get wet wrapped up in all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think that there's, there's some 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 tricks. There's some stumbling blocks that the enemy can throw out there sometimes. So yeah. it's like we might be cruising along, right? Yeah. And we're doing pretty good, not being in judgment. But then someone curses us. Well, yeah. what if someone curses us? What if someone slanders us? And this is where someone taught this to me recently. And this has been game changing. And all they taught me was what the scripture said. And it's this. Bless those who curse you. That actually breaks the power of the curse. When you bless those that curse you, you break the power of the curse. And then another time recently, I was reciting that revelation, which is just what the scripture says to someone else ministering to someone. And mm -hmm. I remembered the second half of the verse. And then they wrote me later that day and they said, it worked. It worked. Yeah. Something that had been bugging them for years. It worked. And here was it. Yeah. Pray for those who spitefully use you. And mm -hmm. when you pray for the person that used you spitefully, it breaks the curse of that spiteful use and that resentment cycle that people get caught in. 
And so yes. we need to know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but not spiritual carnal. and divinely powerful for the pulling down of strongholds because the enemy comes in and he baits us into judgment. And if we don't know that we have these weapons of our warfare that God provides in the place of temptation, a pathway out. And so the pathway out in the place of cursing, try blessing. And the pathway out in the place of being spitefully used, try to pray for them, right? And what it does is God saying, I'm giving you a way out of this. The pathway out when when someone else won't choose to be at peace with you is you can choose to be at peace with them, but only so far as it depends upon you and you know you've done your part and then you can you can give that relationship a little bit of a rest to give it some time, right? It, it doesn't have to be fixed this moment. They don't have to come around this moment, right? And so those are three those are three examples where, God, where if we don't know the weapons of our warfare, we can get caught up in judgment because we feel like something needs to be fixed right now. It has to be rec- it has to be rectified. It has to be vindicated. When actually God has a supernatural strategy to keep you out of the place of judgment in each of those offenses. I wonder, Peter, if if people don't quite understand, uh, and I'm I'm sure you know this is something that I continue to walk in uh, as well, but. Um, that you only have authority where you have responsibility. Mm. And so that there, you know, a lot people become, you know, maybe critical of, uh, you know, some person or something, but they, they have no, um, they have no responsibility. And so therefore no authority over that person or in that situation. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a really difficult place to put yourself in because, you can see the problem or the problem you think exists, but there's no way to rectify. There's no way that mm. to deal, deal yep. with it because yep. you don't have an authority in that, you know, like if it's somebody that you have responsibility for, then you have an authority over and you can address it. You can fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's why um, third party offense is, is really very dangerous mm-hmm. when you're offended because somebody else is offended. Mm. Uh, that person who's offended with that person can fix that up. They can, you mm-hmm. know, they can resolve it, but you're still stuck with the offense. Yes. Right. So yes. it's a triangulation type, you know, sort sort of things. And I think that mm. so often that we become critical of of things, and you know, I don't think there's any shortage of, of being able to be critical around the the things that have been happening in in recent times, mm-hmm. um, but. You know, what does it produce? Mm-hmm. What what what's the fruit of it? You know, mm-hmm. Jesus is saying the the fruit of walking in the kingdom, the realm of the kingdom, in partnership yeah. with the Holy Spirit, is to bring about righteousness. It's to bring yes. about peace, and it's to bring about joy. Yes, because right? that that has good effect. Mm. You know, it that those sorts of things that that anybody wants like you said before mm-hmm. mm. wow so, well we're um it doesn't take us very long but we we could we, <laughs> we could keep going i think we we keep we we could absolutely keep going but listen can i can i just finish with this um well can i Do it. can i say this <laughs> um uh in in deuteronomy um if um i just find um, where, where the scripture is, um, you might just have to, uh, yeah, Deuteronomy 28, uh, I know it's Old Testament, but it says, you know, because you didn't serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance mm-hmm. of everything. Come on. He said, he said look, th- this is, this is my desire is that you serve mm. me. You serve whatever you're doing, whether it's in business, whether whatever else with, with joy and gladness of heart. Mm-hmm. For the abundance of, of everything, whether you have got the manifestation of the abundance or not, he said, I, I, I want you to serve me with that way. He yes. said, if, if you don't, then I'm going to give you over to lack. Right? Which is what he says. He says, you'll serve your enemies whom the Lord will send you again in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness. Mm-hmm. So hunger is the lack of food. Yep. Thirst is the lack of water. Um and nakedness is the lack of clothes, clothes, and in need of everything is just straight out yeah, lack. So he said, because, because you didn't recognize that mm-hmm. my kingdom is about abundance, 
yep. and taken and cho chosen to serve me with joy and gladness of heart and therefore com therefore communicate that your life as a, as a child of mine is a, is a joyous and glad place to be where you have yep. access to every single thing that you need. Come on. And if you don't live like that, if you don't serve like that, then you're misrepresenting me. And if you're misrepresenting mm. me, then I'm going to say, okay, uh, you can have what you want. You can have what you're misrepresenting and you can have lack. Mm -hmm. And all not, your ways my, acknowledge him. Plan for you. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And what you acknowledge about him is who he'll be for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a pretty serious thing, you know, when we're talking about when Jesus, uh, you know, is telling us about the kingdom and then Paul is saying, listen, this is what the kingdom looks like. It's about righteousness, peace and joy. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy you know, I want to I want to say to people today, what's your righteous, what's your righteous output like? You know, what, what is your joy output like? What is your peace mm -hmm. outlook like? And if you've lost any of those or lost any of those senses of those, go back to where you last felt them. Go back to mm. understanding about the righteousness that you live out of because he is righteous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Realize that your peace is because he's peace and because he's his joy, that fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right, it's the activity of the Holy Spirit at work in you, mm -hmm. and He wants to once again reactivate you in those things. Yes, I was feeling as you're talking about lack, Mark. I think it's I don't I can't piece it together for people why this is a key, but we break off cycles of lack in your yes. life right now, in everybody's yes. life right now. We break off cycles yeah. of lack. I actually release the supernatural, um, supernatural goodnesses. You know when God just does something for you when you're like, he's so good. God, you're so good. You exceeded my expectations. You just blew my mind. That was a gift from heaven. That was a kiss from God. How much more does my heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask? Come on. He's yes. my daddy. He's amazing. I release that to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. We need some yes. breakthrough in some of that. And I think that that's going to break the power of lack. Break agreement yes. with lack. Remember the goodness yes. of God. Don't forget the yes. testimonies of how he's been to you before. It's going to yes. cause you to come back into his presence. It's going to cause yes. you to kind of find that joy again. It's going to cause you to yes. remember the righteousness and peace again. And yes. don't, out of a place of lack, get into judgment towards other people. Yes. It's a trick of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy. Right. We have everything in Christ provided yes. for us. Let's get back yeah. to a recognition of his goodness. And I mm -hmm. think some people are going to have some repentance. They're going to have some repentance. But it's going to come out of God's goodness. His goodness is going to lead us into a place of saying, wait a second. Why did I forget about mm -hmm. this? This is who you are to me, God. Let me receive mm -hmm. that. I acknowledge that that's who you are to me. So we bless you all. We bless you to be broken out of any cycle of lack, any cycle of negativity, any mm -hmm. cycle of critique, and back into the yeah. place of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yes, Peter. Amen. I just, I was just feeling like when you were praying that and declaring that, that you were just releasing not only just an invitation, which I think we've been giving this whole day, but a power mm -hmm. for people to be uh, propelled into mm. that righteousness, peace and joy, or at least another expression or another yep. new fresh dimension of it. So we yes. just say, welcome to a new dimension of <laughs> righteousness, peace and mm. joy in the Holy Spirit and with the Holy Amen. Spirit. Come on. There's the title for today. Welcome to a new dimension of righteousness, peace, welcome. and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Welcome. Amen. Welcome to it. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Well, Peter. All right. So great. good. As always being with you. Oh, uh, man. I think uh, you and Chris will be on next yeah. week. We'll so hold down the fort next week. You hold down the fort, yes. And so uh, thanks for joining Insight Now and uh, our time uh, together we we have a number of programs that are going out throughout the week and we uh, uh, invite you to like it and share share them around yes and please do. Uh, we thank you for thank you for joining thank you for listening to us all right god bless you guys all right bye-bye